Hello and welcome to lecture nine on special relativity. In today's class, we're going to discover a powerful tool with which we can generalize our dictionary using the idea of the space-time interval or space-time metric that we've talked about. We will see that this allows us to define the transformations between different inertial observers using the concept of a group in mathematics. And this group is called the Lorentz group. And we will see that the Lorentz group uh, tells us how different objects transform. And some of these objects will be generalizations of vectors that we're familiar with from uh, rotations in space. But these will be rotations of vectors in space-time, so they will be what are called four vectors. Okay, so we'll have generalized transformations or generalized rotations of these objects which are called four vectors. And we will see that there are certain quantities which do not transform from one inertial observer to another inertial observer. And these are things that we call four scalars, okay, things that uh, do not change under this generalized Lorentz transformation. And finally, we'll talk about uh, the idea of tensors. How can we construct new objects that uh, transform from one inertial observer to another inertial observer, but have more complicated rules than the transformations of vectors and scalars? So let's go back to an example that we've discussed. Uh, when we start with an observer in frame S, and we move to a frame S prime, where S prime is moving relative to S at a speed V, or equivalently a speed parameter beta, which is V by C. Then we've seen that if we have coordinates uh, C, T, X, Y, and Z, as described by an observer S, then we can arrange them in this way, in a column vector. And we can ask how they are related to the coordinates of a space-time event as seen by an observer S prime, which we denote with CT prime, X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. And we've seen that the transformation is linear, okay? And the linear transformation matrix depends only on this parameter V. And we'll assume that uh, S prime is moving with respect to S, uh, let's say along the z-axis, uh, sorry, the x-axis. And so if that motion is along the x-axis, the transformation looks like this. Okay, where uh, gamma is one over the square root of one minus beta square. So this tells us the transformation between the coordinates in frame S and the frame S prime. Now, what we've seen is, given this transformation rule for coordinates, there is a space-time interval, okay? In this case, it's the interval between, uh, let's say the, the point zero, 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 zero in frame S, that is time is zero, space coordinates are zero, and the space-time point with coordinates uh, c, t, x, y, z, also in frame s. And if we construct this quantity, okay, this quantity is what we call uh, delta s square or d s square if, uh, uh, if t, x, y, z are infinitesimally small. And this is called a space-time distance. Okay, and what we've seen is if we calculate the same quantity in frame S prime, then we would get exactly the same number. Okay, that is we would get the same space-time distance between these two spatial points, uh, space-time points A and B. So that is if we calculated the quantity C square T prime square minus X prime square minus Y prime square minus Z prime square, this quantity would also turn out to be the same. 
So let me just write this in infinitesimal form. So for a, a two space-time points A and B, which are separated by an amount uh, dt, dx, dy, dz. So let's imagine that this uh, is at 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. What's important is the separation between these two, uh, not the absolute locations of A and B. Uh, we can define the infinitesimal space-time distance between these two infinitesimally separated points as c squared dt squared minus dx squared minus dy squared minus dz squared. And for an observant frame S prime, these same space-time points would give us the same distance measure, but calculated using the coordinates in the new frame. Now, what we've done is we've started with a particular set of observers, that is an observer S and an observer S prime. And for these two particular observers, we have shown that the quantity ds square is invariant. But now we can turn this question around and we can ask a new question, which is, what is the most general set of linear transformations on the coordinates in frame S, okay, where S is some particular frame. Uh, that is, what is the most general set of uh, transformations on C, T, X, Y, Z, linear transformations, such that the space-time interval between any two space-time points is uh, preserved. Okay, so clearly the transformation that we've written down here is one such transformation which preserves this distance measure. But what we'd now like to ask is, are there other transformations that preserve the same space-time interval? And can we find all of them? So mathematically, what we're trying to find is transformations that take us to a new set of space-time coordinates. So this is some other generalized observer S prime, not the same as uh, the particular S prime that we chose above. And we're looking for transformations which are linear, so therefore they can be expressed in the form of four by four matrices. Okay, so we're looking for four by four matrices. Let's call these matrices lambda. And uh, this transformation with this matrix will lead to a new set of coordinates, ct prime, x prime, y prime, z prime. And we want these transformations to be linear, so lambda is independent of our space-time points. Okay, so uh, this would give us the most general linear transformation, but we want linear transformations which satisfy a particular criteria. That is, uh, we want the quantity that is this quantity, to be the same as this quantity, okay, uh, after transformations. And again, we can write this uh, space-time interval using matrix notation, 
So let's write delta S square in matrix notation. It can be written as, we'll write a row vector, T, T, X, Y, Z. one minus one minus one minus one and zeros everywhere else t t x y okay and similarly we could have written c t prime x prime y prime c prime one zero 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 minus one zero 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 minus one zero 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 minus one C T prime X prime Y prime Z prime Okay And what we want is under this general linear transformation we want uh this quantity, the space-time metric, to be the same, no matter what choice of point we make for t, x, y, z, or equivalently for t prime, x prime, y prime, z prime. Now, we can write this, uh, this space-time interval, okay, using these matrices. And we've introduced this four by four matrix over here. This matrix is called a metric or measure of space-time distance. And uh, this metric is denoted with the symbol G. Okay, so it's, it's a matrix with symbol G. And this matrix is just the one that we've written down over here. So G is uh, what we call the metric metric or measure okay, so for any space-time point uh, if we want to know what is the distance between two space-time points uh, we would construct for one space-time point we would construct this column vector uh, this would be in frame s for another space-time point we would construct this column vector this would be A, this would be point B. And we would take uh, the difference of these two column vectors, that is, we would construct This quantity and then finally if we want to construct the space-time interval between the points a and b okay we uh, would take uh, so let's call this a column vector v so the space-time interval between a and b would be given by v transpose that is we make this a row vector dot g where this is matrix product dot v okay this would give us the space-time interval between the points a and b and you can check that this would just be c square e b minus t a square minus x b minus x a square minus y b minus y a square minus z b minus z a square okay and similarly uh, in the frame s prime we would construct delta s square a b as v prime transpose dot g dot v prime where v prime is this column vector.
the, that is the difference of uh, the space-time coordinates between the points A and B in uh, some other coordinate system uh, of S prime. Okay, so now what we're seeking, uh, to put it in this mathematical language, is we are looking for transformations so that we get uh, column vectors v prime, which are related to column vectors v. Okay, so v being this kind of column vector, the difference between two space-time points, v prime being this column vector, the difference between two space-time points in the new coordinate system. And we're looking for linear transformations of this kind, where lambda is our linear transformation matrix, such that the quantity uh, delta s square, which is v transpose dot g dot v is preserved. That is, this quantity should be the same as v prime transpose dot g dot v prime. Okay, so we're not just looking for any linear transformations. We're looking for linear transformations that satisfy this criteria. And this criteria should be satisfied no matter what choice of space-time point we make, uh, space-time points A and B we make. That is, we want this to be true for any space-time points A and B, or equivalently for any B. Okay, that is starting with a column vector for any two space-time points, like this, and making a linear transformation of coordinates to V prime, we want to find the most general set of such linear transformations, such that uh, this uh, product of matrices, which gives us a single number, which is the space-time interval, is exactly the same as this product of matrices in uh, our new coordinates. And so you can see that this criteria, plugging in for uh, v prime over here, would just be v transpose dot g dot v is v transpose lambda transpose dot lambda transpose dot g dot lambda dot v. Okay, where I've uh, used the fact that v prime is lambda dot v. Okay, again, this is a matrix product. This is a four by four matrix. This is a four cross one matrix, and the result is a four cross one column matrix. And the transpose of this equation is v transpose dot lambda transpose. Okay, so this is the condition that the matrices lambda have to satisfy for any choice of v or equivalently if i write it in this way okay uh, matrix products are associative so i can group them any way i like so let me perform this set of multiplications first and what that tells me is that since this uh, relation the left hand side and the right hand side are equal for any choice of v you can just compare these two expressions and say that we want transformations such that G is lambda transpose dot G dot lambda. Okay, so we are looking for matrices lambda that satisfy uh, this equation. That's what we mean by finding the most general space-time transformations that preserve the space-time interval between uh, two space-time points.